This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Belfast here at Waterfront Hall. I'm joined by Peter Fury. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, Coogan. Yeah. yeah? Sporting a slick back today. It's just lazy. It's just lazy. I need a haircut. <laughs> so I've just put it back. Looks all right. Looks all right, Peter. Uh, it's right. Um, Con Sheehan moved to 5 and 0. Uh, good solid eight rounds in the bank for you. Um, you must be noticing. Um, subtle improvements in his performances, obviously since his first fight. Yeah, he's improving. Uh, he's not. He's not sitting on his shots enough. Because you notice when he when he throws the shots, he starts bouncing on the canvas. So he just needs to dip his knees more, work the body, and turn with his shots, and give himself some space with the body shots. He's definitely improving a lot. Obviously, you're in and out with him in the gym every day. What you're seeing in the gym, are we seeing that in the ring, or certain elements of that in the ring? You're seeing elements of it. But he's, he is working on sitting on his shots. That's what we need to do. And then, uh, obviously, his second phase attacks as well. Because he's got to know how to keep people busy, keep turning them. Guys like that, you know, they'll go at their own pace. He was a punch bag, basically. But, you know, you've got to draw him out of that journeyman zone. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Mm. So these are the things he's got to learn. But so far, you're so pleased with... He's, 100% he's yeah, got fantastic his skills, he's a very good mover, he's got good footwork, but what he's got to do is he's got to sit on his shots. He was hating the kid, he smashed him to pieces. Yeah, we just saw him there actually, he, he yeah, looked he's in bits, not in a good way. Yeah. But, you know, it's the clean shots that do the damage, hmm. it's not the shots that hurt, it's when they look up on the canvas they don't know what's happened. They're the correct delivered shots, so that's what I'm looking for, but it's coming. How many fights do you anticipate him having for the rest of the year now, we're sort of coming uh, into March, well we are into March now, so the first th third of the year is coming to an end. I want to keep Con busy because he doesn't get hit a lot, he's got good skills, so he's got no marks on him, he could go again tomorrow, so basically just need to keep him busy. He's got a couple of eight rounders now, so uh, he's going in the right way. Very, very busy time for you and your fighters at the moment, yeah, yeah. obviously no more such than Huey Fury who's going out to New Zealand, made a sixth, uh, to rip that belt away from Joseph Parker. You know, I'm very excited about this fight because uh, everybody, you know, don't give you much of a chance. And uh, these are the fights we relish in because they're going to see something special in you we've not seen before. He's a different fighter than what you've seen in the past. I can tell you that. Are you disappointed that the fight isn't over here and you're having to travel? Or? I'm slightly disappointed, yeah, because it's the other end of the world, but uh, New Zealand's a beautiful place. The disappointing thing is we've got to go for the visa issues again. So, you know, but what can we do? So um, the visa now has been lodged, by the way. We've put it in. So uh, we're optimistic. It's a Commonwealth country. I've been to Canada. It's a Commonwealth country. I had no problems there. So I'm optimistic uh, it'll be okay. You don't anticipate any hitches in that? Well, it's down to New Zealand immigration. Mm. Uh, I can't say. Whatever their decision is, I'll respect it. But um, they've had a lot of paperwork. So we've covered every detail, all the past record, when, what, if. They've got everything there. So it's took, uh, I think it's taken about three weeks to get it all together. Have you been impressed with Parker? His win over Ruiz and Takam and the performances you've seen of late from him? I am impressed. I don't change my view because he's fighting world level opposition. Ruiz was a good fighter, a very good fighter. Fast hands, could punch. Good combination puncher for a heavyweight. And uh, Takam speaks for itself. He's worked the world level operators, aren't they? You're never going to have an easy night with these type of guys. Mm. You know, Pavekin, 10 rounds with this uh, guy. So Parker's, uh, he can fight, he's coming on. <coughs> Did you see the action from the weekend? I'm sure you do, you're an avid boxing fan yourself, Peter, away from when you're doing your training. But Hay and Bellew, did you catch up on that? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend I'm a know-all, but I called this. I said what more or less would happen. I didn't say Bellew would win it. I said it's a 50-50 fight. Don't underestimate Bellew. You know, I see it. You know, it's what it is. And Bellew done all the right things. You know, um, the right man won. If David A is injured, he can come back again. So um, that's it, you know. But, but Bellew, I'm impressed with Bellew because he's a fighting man from Liverpool, you know. He, he bites on his gum shield. He's a warrior type of guy, isn't he? You know, he goes, he goes down, he gets up. He's got a pair of bollocks. He's a fighting man. And I like bollocks in a fighter. So full of credit to Tony Bellew. Maximum respect. Both fighters come out of a lot of credit. David, obviously, for having the injury and then 
going to the 11th round and was, the people didn't realise how serious obviously the killer's problem was as the fight was going on but uh, judging by what's happened after it did seem serious so credit to him for that and, and Bellew for everyone saying that he was going to get knocked out in a round so credit both fighters there in that way yeah Peter. absolutely yeah. You know, he needs credit as well to come through and fight with an injury look you know they can come again you know uh, he can get 100% Let's see, let's see what he's really about now anyway. Because if he's got if he's got that metal in him, he'll want to avenge that at all cost. So can he back down on his gun field? Or will he just take the money and whistle off into the sunset? We have to see. Yeah, he's gonna be out for quite some time now, so um, obviously for the immediate future, Bellew's gotta suppose to look elsewhere for the moment. Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm gonna ask you about um, about <coughs> Tyson, obviously. A lot of tweets coming out from Tyson over the last week or so, uh, suggesting a return uh, for May uh, was what he said. Um, is that realistic, Peter? I think there's a talk of him uh, fighting. He wouldn't be so far off, but there is issues to deal with first. So, you know, nothing's uh, firmed up, and uh, I see it as unlikely. He obviously has the issues about the suspension of the ball. He's going another route uh, with... Uh, a different board, an option? No, look, there is no other route. You can't go another route. Everybody's affiliated. You can't be suspended in one country, hop over to the next and give you a license. It ain't happening. You know, look, the best will in the world, <coughs> he's got to get out of the... Um... And by the way, Tyson isn't suspended with the UCAD charges. Hmm. They got lifted. Tyson is suspended because he told UCAD to fuck off because he sees himself as being totally harassed by them. So Tyson, he just said, jog on, mm. you're getting nothing. That cost him a suspension. So he's not being suspended here for being a drug cheat, nothing like that. He's suspended because Tyson says, oh, you want to go at me, dear? Jog on. And he's got it on video, because that's what happened. So that's the reality of it. So, uh, but he is suspended. He's suspended by UCAP for that reason. And with the best one in the world, he can't box anywhere on the planet until that gets resolved. So there's a hearing early part of May, is that right? Yeah, there's a hearing uh, coming up very shortly on it and uh, we'll get it resolved. Certainly hope. I mean, he put it out there, him and Tony Bellew the other day. I know he's kind of dangling a carrot to everyone and trying to sort of put things out to see the reception, but is that a fight you'd entertain for Tyson, him and Bellew now? He can entertain any fight. You know, he's a colourful character, Tyson, isn't he? So anything can happen. But for me with Tyson, he's... Uh, He's got no rush, you know, let's, uh, first of all, let's get everything cleared up and um, he can come back with a clean mind and I want to see him back 100%, not getting in the ring, semi in shape or whatever, you know, let him take his time to come back. He's had some, um, he's had some health issues mental wise as well. <coughs> so that's, uh, he's already biting at the bullet, he wants to fight again. So he's on the mend. That was the first step though, wasn't it? Just That's to the first step for yeah. him, yeah. So he is coming back, but you know, there's no rush for Tyson. You believe he's in a better place now mentally than he was months ago? You know, everybody's got to find the feet, haven't they? He's a fighter. How's he going to pay his house bills? How's he going to feed his children? You've got to work, haven't you? Hmm. What are you going to do? Win the lottery and get two million quid and keep spending it every week and not working. You'll spend that. <clears throat> got no other choice. He loves fighting anyway. He's just been wrestling with his own mind. But because he's of that character, that's what makes him such a special heavyweight. He said that, you know, he's nearly 25 stone, but he said, me and Peter, we've done it before, 24 times before, and we'll do it again, if, you know. So that's not really... Well, he, he has, he can get that weight off. Yeah. You know, he's an heavyweight. He's six foot eight, <laughs> stroke six foot nine. What do you expect him to do? He can eat out of a dustbin. He's a big, big man. <laughs> So look, yeah, I'm six foot one, yeah? Trained down 15 stone. I can put three stone on in eight weeks myself. So he's twice the size of me, so it stands common sense. You're looking at an athlete, <coughs> totally trained down, in the gym religiously, four hours per day, melted at 18 stone seven. Yeah. So of course he's gonna put, he's gonna be 25, yeah. Of course he's gonna be 25 stone plus. But that's no problem, he's been that time and time again. I think he said today he's been there 24 times. <laughs> probably has. Probably has, probably has. But um, I mean, the bottom line <laughs> is, we want him 
uh, physically fit, mentally fit, and, and back in boxing. We need Tyson Fury back. I'll tell you what we got. I think we've got Yui's coming through. He's going to be a special talent. He's going to shock a lot of people, just as Tyson did. And uh, Tyson's what he is. I just want the lad to get 100% right, mentally, get focused, and wipe the division out. Because that's what I had in mind for him in the first place. He already put one foot on the ladder. And look, he won the world title, call it age, call it whatever. You know, he wanted to enjoy it. He went a little bit haywire. But look, you know, he, he has had emotional <coughs> problems. So these things happen. Okay, Peter Fury, listen, unless you've got anything you want to add? Not unless you have. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. What can I say? We've said it all already. No, absolutely. But it's a, it's a good, uh, a positive and uh, busy time for you and Team Fury. So. This is what I like to do. We like to come and do the fighting. Hmm. I like the fighters to fight. and Bringing young heavyweights like this through. You know, he sees the mistakes. Con, he's listening now. Doing well. This, this kid's got a big future as well. So, piece by piece, getting there. So these lads, are, they make a name for themselves. So it's all good. Peter, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV. And thanks to MTK as well. For, all, uh, for everything what they do here. So it's uh, very good. Maximum respect to them. Thank you very much. God bless.